Hi there, this is Dr. Anna Maria Helt with Basmati.com and our Herb of the Week. And this week I'm going to talk about garden nasturtium. And so this one's a little bit beat up, but here's a leaf. Uh, if you live in parts of California or in the South, you may actually be really familiar with this. It's naturalized here in North America. It originally comes from South America. And in some states it is considered invasive. And I remember uh, one of the first times I actually met this plant was in San Francisco in Golden Gate Park. And it just grows all over the place in that park. And it almost is similar to kudzu and, and how it grows because it's this viney plant. And it's just growing up and around the base of trees and even up onto the trunks as well. So very common and somewhat aggressive, again, in different uh, parts of the country. Now where I am, it's uh, 6,500 feet. Uh, it may or may not. Uh, last <laughs> too long on my balcony it, it'll be an annual here so you can grow it in a pot and it does grow pretty rapidly and so nasturtium tropomelium uh, is the botanical name the genus name and I'm not going to try to spell that for you but it'll be added to the post <laughs> so you can see how to spell the the genus now the reason I'm pointing that out is there actually is a different genus or genera <clears throat> Uh, our genus actually of plant uh, that is called nasturtium and nasturtium is the scientific name there and it's actually not the same plant as this where nasturtium is the common name which brings up the point of how annoying nomenclature can be especially with common names you can wind up with multiple plants uh, having the same name and it gets really confusing and so this is why I try to remember to mention the botanical names when I talk about plants so we know exactly what I'm talking about now one of my favorite uses of this plant is actually just eating it it's delicious if you like spicy type greens like watercress and things like that and <clears throat> this actually uh, nasturtium has a similar flavor as watercress but a little bit spicier and the leaves are edible and they can get quite a bit bigger than this one my plant is relatively new that's out there on the balcony the flowers are also edible and this plant has really lovely flowers they're bright bright neon red and orange and yellowish so they're gorgeous to look at and they actually are really pretty just uh, sprinkled on a salad so a very nutritious uh, extremely nutritious actually and and uh, spicy food and in fact the flowers are one of the richest sources food sources of lutein which is a powerful antioxidant and it's always best to get your antioxidants through foods as much as you can sometimes um, a well blended supplement can be good but long-term supplement with high dose antioxidants might ultimately increase oxygen oxidative stress in the body. So good to get your antioxidants from foods uh, like nasturtium and other brightly pigmented plants. And so another food use that I really love for nasturtium is to harvest the little seed pods. And I wish I had some to show you right now. I just have leaves. Uh, but the seed pods, uh, you can use like capers. They're delicious. So you could brine them, which is what I tend to do, and use them just like you would capers. But they're, they're bigger than capers, so it's even more salty goodness. You can also pickle them if you're not lazy like I am. And that's another great way to use the seed pods from nasturtium. And so you can more or less eat the whole plant. You know, the stem and the, the vine and such, eh, you know, but the leaves and the flowers and the seed pods, delicious. Now, you can use this plant as medicine as well. It is antimicrobial, so it's going to be active against things like fungi and bacteria. You can use it for cold and flu, especially... Um, if it is kind of towards the end of that cold and flu where you might be a little bit colder um, feeling and your lungs and tissues are a little bit kind of boggy um, and this is not the plant to use when you have a rip roaring hot cold or flu um, this plant itself is too hot and you're not necessarily going to feel very good on it even if it is antimicrobial so more of those kind of slow annoying colds that you can't seem to kick um, especially if your boogers are more clear whitish not so much bright yellow um, green orange or exciting colors like that and so but good for respiratory tract infections you can use it for gi tract infections if for instance like me you live in the rocky mountains and decide to go get sushi depending on where you get it that may or may not be a good idea so you can turn the nasturtium for a little bit of help there if you've got something nasty in your gut 
also good <clears throat> for genitourinary tract infections. Now, you're definitely not applying the herb topically for those. You'll burn the heck out of yourself, but you can use it internally. And a great way to use this plant internally um, is food, but you can make a tincture of it. If you're going to use the tincture, though, be aware it's very spicy. Maybe not quite as hot as a like a chili pepper tincture. In herb school, one of my teachers said it's about half as hot as a chili pepper tincture, but I suppose it depends on the chili pepper. Um, but it's hot, so it might not be a bad idea to take that nasturtium extract with a cooling, soothing herb. Um, maybe you have uh, a, just a little bit of mallow or violet or something like that, uh, or even something like milky oats, just to kind of cut a little bit of that pungency, because it can be pretty overwhelming. But a great herb for infections uh, and uh, a very easy to grow herb for that. One of my, uh, I don't know, ethics, principles, whatever, as a practitioner, is to stick with plants that are very plentiful and or very easy to grow. And depending on where you live, this might be really plentiful, just kind of growing out and about. Make sure if you're harvesting it from a park, you're allowed to harvest in that park and it's not sprayed. Um, <clears throat> or maybe you have a neighbor who has it growing and they'll let you pick some, but it's actually very easy to grow. Like I said, I live in the mountains, but it's doing just fine in a pot on my patio. And I might even try to bring it inside and see if it'll overwinter. But if you live anywhere warmer than the mountains, say you're in California or you're in the southern part of the United States, you should have no problem growing this. And you might, in fact, put it in a pot so that it doesn't take over your garden. But a great food as medicine, garden nasturtium, and a beautiful addition to your garden, a very cheerful addition to your garden. And so until next time from Milo and I, be well.